welcome everybody to the Redevelopment Commission meeting June 21st, 2022. Um, let's start this evening with roll call. Deb Hutton here. Randy Cassidy here. Cindy Canarni here. Martha Street here. Uh, staff present. John Zodi with Hand Department. Alex Crowley, Economic and Sustainable Development. Larry Allen Legal. Jeff Underwood, Controller Treasurer. All right, thank you. Uh, next item, reading of the minutes from May 23rd, 2022, May 31st, 2022, special meeting, and June 6th, 2022. Is there any comments or questions from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Deb Hutton, I so move to accept the minutes of May 23rd, 2022, May 31st, 2022, special meeting, and June the 6th, 2022. Yeah, Randy Cassidy, I second. First and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. All right. Next item of business examination of claims, June 10th, 2022, for $1,922,610.93. Are there any comments or questions from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, in regards to the $810,000, is that finish up our Fourth Street parking garage? Uh, there is some left um, in escrow that's the final final bit so we're just confirming that everything's done but that is the final payment for for sure okay, so it's just retainage or just a that's the retainage and the final payment, final payment. yeah okay uh, randy cassie i'll make a motion to approve uh, deb hutton second all in favor say aye aye, aye. Next item on the agenda examination of payroll registers for June 3rd, 2022 for $34,420.86. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Deb Hutton, I move to accept the, uh, approve the payroll register June 3rd, 2022. Randy Cassidy, Cassidy, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye as well. Uh, next item on the agenda is the director's report. Uh, thank you, Madam President. No uh, substantive report for the commissioners tonight other than to uh, just remind you that our next meeting is July 5th um, on a Tuesday due to the July 4th holiday. So it would be great if we know we've got, uh, we have a pretty heavy agenda planned for that night. So are all of you able to make it, may I ask now, um, 5 p.m. on July 5th? Yes, I'm planning to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Hutton, do you know or if you're... Oh, oh she's looking. No, no, we'll do a coming. check on... I think I am. I'm here in town, back in town, so I think I am here. Okay. All right. And that's well, July, Tuesday, July 5th. Okay. Right? Are you, are you yes. Okay. I would also just add, there's probably a likelihood of an executive session before that meeting, uh, just okay. at 4.30. 4.30. So. Okay. You'll uh, send it, we'll send out a notice later this week to get confirmation from you. Um, and then... Um, that's concludes my report. Other than that, I'm taking notes tonight, so I'm taking minutes. So pardon the future errors that will occur <laughs> next, <laughs> next approval. <laughs> uh, we can read them twice. <laughs> yes, yeah. please do. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a legal report? Uh, one, one thing to note: um, there is a, a, a proposed agenda item to to add, which would be resolution 22. 42 which would be the approval of additional funds for neighborhood improvement grant distribution uh, just very briefly uh, this should have gone out in the packet this is my mistake it was just renumbered and so it got omitted from the packet because something else got bumped uh, in this case uh, it is for overruns of the neighborhood improvement grant um, just a cleanup thing you would all improve the approve the grant amount but there's a little bit more just that you'll hear about later from probably director Zodi. so Otherwise, I'm happy to answer any other questions. Is there a treasurer's report? No report. Happy to answer questions. Thank you. Uh, business development updates. <clears throat> Just one update. Um, this is regarding the Hopewell site. And if, if you recall, we've talked, I think, in the yeah. past broadly about having some uh, potential outside help on that on those projects. One would be a owner's representative, the other would be a commercial real estate function. And so we released the commercial real estate RFQ uh, last two Wednesday, 
Um, it is uh, in out, out and about, and uh, the responses are due on the 14th of July. So, so that's out there. Just want to let you know that, and then we will certainly come back to you with, with information from that. Just to amend, also just one item just to add, just because I forgot to mention it, I'm sorry. Um, the Meridium resolution before City Council in terms of creating a new TIF district passed. And so July 5th, we will have a public hearing on that. Uh, that notice will be in the paper this Friday um, to, to notify the, the public that that meeting will be happening. But we're very excited about the Meridium project is moving forward for fiber. And that's not, I mean, our, our meeting, our RDC meeting on the 5th is already public. The public meeting for Meridian will be after that? It's during the meeting. So there's a there's a classification under Indiana Code for public hearings mm -hmm. where people can bring official remonstrances or any objections that they have to the project. Since the uh, your declaratory resolution was approved by both the Plan Commission and City Council, it comes back to you for a confirmatory resolution. And part of that confirmatory resolution is to hold an official public hearing so that you can receive any remonstrances or official public comment. That's in our time. That will be during your time, yeah. It'll just be like a regular agenda item. And we take comment already for all agenda items for the most part. And so it, there's the distinction is very limited there, except for we also allow for if anybody has written remonstrances, and this is for anybody participating by Zoom or watching by cats as well, if there are written remonstrances, you can submit those to me ahead of time, and I'll read them into the record during that hearing. Um, Alex, you mentioned owner's rep. Is there a timing on RFQ on, on that piece of it? I, I am hoping that that will be within 30 days. Okay. So um, we I wanted to get this first one out, out the door and then we'll turn around and work, work on the next one. Thank you. Any other updates? Yeah. All right, let's move on to new business. Uh, resolution 22-36. Approval of demolition contract for Hopewell Phase One East. Who would like to speak to us about that? Good evening, Matt Smith with the Engineering Department. Uh, the Hopewell Phase One East demolition project will include the demolition of existing houses and buildings on the site. On June 6, bids were opened, and the city received five bids for the project. The lowest bid received from Bluestone Tree was an incomplete bid. It was just for the tree removal portion of the contract. And then the second lowest bid from Omega, uh, they did not include all of the necessary bid documents in their packet. So we moved on to the third lowest bid from Renaissance. Uh, that bid was for $588,775.02, and they were the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. Uh, con the demolition construction is anticipated to begin in July, and this contract for the demolition is also on the uh, Board of Public Works agenda this evening for approval. I can uh, answer any questions you may have. The, the, low, the low bid was wrong. The next one did not include everything. So That's correct. We went to the third one. Yes. As where we're at at this present moment. You just read 588, and our packet says like 587, so I'm just curious if there's a discrepancy. Yeah, there was a just... discrepancy that was corrected. So. Okay, so is that one right, or is the... 588. Meeting? It's 588, so we'll have to change that in regards to our minutes for our resolution. Okay. Yeah, it'll need to be amended. Okay. And then... What's our time frame that we're looking at? Uh, the contractor will have 60 days to complete the demolition. It's quick. Yes. How many structures does that include? If you could just remind me. Uh, Patrick Durgis with the engineering oh, department. Oh, sorry. Patrick Durgis, uh, engineering department. Uh, there are the two large warehouses uh, that are IU Health's uh, current property. Um, there is their home. At 409, or I'm sorry, 321 West Second Street. So that'd be 409, 321, 313, 311, 303. So uh, seven residential homes, uh, a small apartment complex that is next to uh, um, Centerstone and the county's building there, and then uh, the two large warehouses. 
Yeah. Yeah. The Wayne Matt has spoken with the contractor to ensure they were comfortable with that, and they were. Crazy how fast they do things these days. I'm going to take things down. Just Does that take that whole block? Uh, there, there will be uh, three buildings remaining on that block. Uh, the um, St. John and Associates building at First and Morton. And then at uh, Rogers and First is Centerstone's, uh, I believe, two or three story brick building at that corner. And then the Centerstone and County building. Um, that is the, the larger building at uh, 653 South Rogers. Okay. Well, were you just since I'm new to the demolition kind of concept, when you picked the contractor that is the lowest uh, bid and responsible, lowest and responsible bid, could you tell me how you see the city sees the word responsible? So it's not just any low bid, it's right. the lowest and responsible. There so, are documents in our bid packet that we put out for the bid contractor has to fill correctly fill out all of those documents and it was as was the case with Omega they omitted uh, addendum number one and addendum number two which was a required it's document. It's not something like checking the company out for Better Business Bureau or anything We do like receive uh, financial information about their ability to do the mm -hmm. job and we also receive information about previous jobs they have done. Great. Thank and you. Uh, Venison is doing the larger hospital building yeah. demolition and they're out of Indianapolis and have done numerous jobs in the past. So. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sounds good. Part of dealing with that, yeah, they, they'll have to follow our local ordinances for our living yes. wages and also for any other participation we have. That's right. Inclusiveness. Okay. All right. Well, Any other questions from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a mo Randy Cassidy. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution with for the demolition of the Hopewell project. It'll have to be as amended for as in five hundred eighty-eight thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars and two cents. Is that correct, Matt? Five eighty-eight seven seventy-five and two cents. So make a resolution for the. Resolution for the amount as amended for 588775. Uh, Do you have a second? All right. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 No opposed. Resolution passes. Thank you. Next item of business is resolution 22 37, approval of revised primary plat approval for Hopewell Phase 1 East project. Who'd like to speak to us about this? Hi, uh, Patrick Gergis with Engineering again. Um, this is a revised plat uh, that we're bringing back after uh, negotiations with city council uh, regarding the alley vacation that was required for the previous plat. Um, in discussion with council, uh, they uh, requested some additional access corridors through the site. Um, uh, so we did east-west alleys in both the northwest, northeast, and southeast corners. And then uh, not shown on this plat because it will be uh, as determined as it develops. There will also be uh, between 10 to 12 foot pedestrian corridors that travel north and south in those three quadrants. Um, the southwest quadrant, which contains the county and centerstone buildings, um, because of the existing infrastructure, alleys just didn't really make sense there. Um, in the uh, northwest corner, um, the property that is at the corner of 2nd and Rogers, um, it has some environmental concerns, and so we weren't showing the alley extending through that at this time. Uh, that may later be amended as we find out more of the environmental concerns, um, but uh, there's also a concern of that alley and its close proximity to the intersection of 2nd and Rogers, um, and so putting an alley out right there um, could also provide some traffic issues. Uh, but as it develops, there will be more. Um, once we find out, as people want to develop that area, the pedestrian corridor and possibly the alley connection to uh, Rogers will be later determined. Um, Andrew Seaboard did a lot of work in, uh, in finding the best solution to this uh, concern. And uh, given the need for the alley vacations for this project to move forward, um, I think what we have is... Uh, 
is a is a good option for this plot and uh, would recommend approval of it. Do we have flexibility in the future for movement of the alleys based upon what the development is, or are we fixed specifically where these are aligned in order to keep things moving through the project as a whole because of reconfiguration is necessary? We will have alleys, and right now they're tentatively in this area, or this is the fixed portion? The, the alleys are fixed. Um, so uh, if the alleys needed to move, um, that would be a vacation of right-of-way. Uh, relocation of right-of-way is still a vacation of right-of-way, and so that would still fall under Indiana Code. Um, that would require approval from council. Okay, so if something changes, it'll have to go back through the council approval, then come back to redevelop for a confirming resolution. That is correct. Okay. Procedurally. Yes. And we really won't know everything until after we've identified developer what the plan is. Correct. Um, I will say that through discussions with council, uh, building size mm -hmm. was uh, one of their concerns. And so uh, I would caution that that I don't believe we, at least as the current discussions took place, we could go back for a larger building face and relocate an alley or anything like that. Um, so I will say that this does limit our uh, the building sizes by the use of these alleys um, and the need for the north-south pedestrian easements. Um, the north-south pedestrian easements are not set in stone and can be adjusted. So both east and west, north and south of those alleys, we have movement, um, but, uh, but the alleys themselves are set okay. with this plot. Okay, with that plot, will that, that'll be the plot that'll be utilized as we start putting in public infrastructure in the next phase? Correct. This uh, this plat change uh, resulted in design changes to our exist to our nearly hundred percent construction drawings. Okay. Uh, the uh, the alleys do allow us to uh, utilize uh, public right of way versus utilizing uh, utility easements. So I believe there are some benefits to it, um, in in getting utilities into uh, public right of ways, and then. Uh, with that design change, we will uh, put the approaches in for the alleys, but not build the actual alleys themselves because of concerns with construction uh, equipment destroying it. And so what it will do is we'll actually uh, stub utilities past those approaches. And so that as, depending on which de development goes in, they can extend those utilities as needed to their site. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I hope so. I'm sure sure we'll find out something as we get a developer in here, but trying my best. <laughs> You're doing a good job. We appreciate it. Any Remember. other questions from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Deb Hutton, I move to accept or approve resolution 2237 as written. Oh, Randy Gasty, second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next item of business, resolution 22-38, sale of real property located 1306 West Kirkwood Avenue. Who'd like to speak to this? Thank you, Madam President. So we, uh, oh. Just real quick, I oh, believe okay. this is also the beginning of a public hearing as well that was noticed, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so just at this time, just everybody's alert that this is the beginning of the public hearing, which will receive uh, public comment on this resolution. Okay. Sorry, thank you, Director. No, that's, uh, thank you. Mr. Allen, um, making a note of that. So this is a property we spoke to the commission about uh, a few months ago. Uh, this is a small residence on uh, West Kirkwood, just as you cross Adams Street on the right, as you kind of go down the hill toward Kleindorfers. Um, the, depart the hand department has owned it. Uh, it's no longer being lived in. Uh, has some structural issues. We thought it was a property that we should probably um, try to uh, move, uh, as in no longer own, because um, it's not an ideal site for affordable housing development. There's some lots to the west of it that are vacant, and the lot itself is kind of a half lot. Uh, it's and very, very close to the street. So um, we did appraisals on it. Those appraisals averaged out at around $22,000, I believe, and this is the uh, public hearing to notice its sale. So uh, once we, and there has been some interest in it, um, took one call about a cash offer and, and so we'll keep you updated if everything proceeds for today. So 
that's the uh, the uh, summary of 1306 West Kirkwood. The It's not a house. It's just a lot. It's a house. It there's, is the there's, house. A, there's a small white house there. That's a silly question. Why do we own it? Uh, we the owner had had a, a deferred uh, mortgage loan through the department, um, and so she passed away. And there were some subsequent uh, matters to deal with with her beneficiaries. And okay. so once those things are resolved, um, the property's basically sitting there. Uh, the loan was deferred. Um, the loan was about twenty-three thousand dollars, and so um, I think it's time to move on. Time to move this structure out, mm -hmm. get it back on the roll. Sure. Yeah, and just okay. Uh, let something good happen there. Okay, and this is just the offering that we're putting out That's right. at the present moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from commissioners? I'll open it up for public comment. Here's there's none in the room. If anyone would like to raise their hand using the hand function on Zoom, so we can acknowledge you. I don't. Uh, uh, I have no raised hands. Excuse me. Uh, no raised hands on Zoom. And uh, let me check chat. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, nothing in chat. All right. Um, hearing no public comment, I will request a motion. Oh, Randy Cassidy, I'll make a motion for approval. Uh, Deb Hutton, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Resolution passes. This concludes the public hearing on, on that resolution. Thank you. Next item of business, Resolution 22-39, approval of funding for painting and sealing at the Dimension Mill. Who would like to speak to this? I can start. Okay, I'm sure. That close to it, but the, uh, as you know, there's a, as you may know, in the mill, which was something the Redevelopment Commission funded and, and redeveloped, um, there have been a couple of offices that have had a lingering odor problem, um, and we've been at it for a long time trying to figure out what's going on. Um, you've authorized previous expenditures to mitigate that, and this is, I think, the final step, hopefully, uh, where we are um, going in and painting and sealing, uh, painting the ceiling, sealing the brick, and also painting some other uh, areas around it. So there's a bid from... Um, um, and Chris. And, and Chris, not Ruth Chris. Not that, Ruth that's Chris. That's for a yes. different uh, bid. Um, and so this authorizes a not to exceed a amount of $12,000 to do that work, which we hope will be the end of this. I, I will just note this does have the possibility. So the quote for the specific work at the mill um, is $8,640. There's a little bit of extra room there for other potential miscellaneous repairs uh, along RDC properties that go above and beyond that. We haven't uh, worked with this, but the city has worked with this contractor several times, uh, and we received that through our um, public works uh, facilities director, J.D. Boroff, and so he recommended this approach both for this project but also just to there's some other things I think that are nagging. Uh, the other thing that will be sealed just in addition to what Alex said is, is the floor I believe so the concrete floor the bare concrete floor in the offices. Can I just ask you know if this doesn't solve the problem what's the next steps? Larry and I are going to self immolate yeah. first <laughs> and then uh, it's really hard to tell. I mean, this is a real, I mean, it's a hit, you know, it's a very old building. Uh, it's very, it's even hard to figure out why it's happening. Um, so we've had, we've had like environmental people come in. We've had uh, a lot of people take a look at this. It is, it's a real, I mean, people are stumped. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do hope that, you know, by sealing up, at least, you, you know, we think that the problem is, is a legacy problem from old machinery that used to be there that's no longer there, but that the, the things have seeped into, you know, the wall and the, and the floor. Um, but again, you know, it's just, it's total mystery. <laughs> is there an opportunity to repurpose the space? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a pretty valuable office space. What would probably have to be done is consideration of opening it up 
to the broader, so opening up the ceiling. I, I don't, and actually, I'm to be honest with you, and Alex may have a better sense of this, I'm not sure that the odor is lingering. I will tell you that this part of the process was always the next step. So in addition to the HVAC that we, in terms of moving air out of there, one of the other things that they recommend just doing as a precautionary measure was sealing this up as well. So as I sit here, I can't tell you that the odor is still lingering in the office. I'm not sure about that. I don't know if you know that it, I haven't been it in, has been. But it's been a real problem for tenants in there. Yeah. It was noticeable. So this is kind of the belt and suspenders approach as, as far as I understand, which is we wanted to have the HVAC unit, but since we had uh, lesser success with doing the radon mitigation, which helped with radon. We actually did mitigate radon from the property anyways. Um, this is kind of the, the final part of that that was always mentioned at the beginning as you'll take these steps going forward. So we'll have to reevaluate and the possible solution then would be to looking at uh, changing the overall structure and, and for the airflow of the offices. At, at the present level, we've installed the fans in the line. To yep. move the air, yeah. and that seems to have helped some. This is just that. Yeah, I think one of the hypotheses is that because this is, there aren't a lot of offices that are totally closed up in the middle, right? Most of it is open space, and so it could be just a concentration of, of a, of a phenomenon that actually, maybe throughout the building, but, no, but, but because air is moving, and nobody, you know, it doesn't really yeah. show up. The right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think it's just a challenge to, you know, keep pouring more and more funds at the problem with no end in sight so yeah. Yeah. trying to come up with a, a different you know path and I know you guys know that all right any other questions from commissioners on this resolution if not I'll entertain a motion uh, Deb Hutton I move to approve resolution 2239 Randy Cassidy second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. <clears throat> resolution passes Resolution 22-40, right of entry to Dimension Mill, Inc. and Boys and Girls Club for access to Trades District, lots for Lemonade Day. Who would like to speak to us about this? I can, very high level. Uh, lemonade Day is on Saturday. It, 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 for all of you who know what it is, it's this terrific, you know, young entrepreneurship kind of event. It's been going on for years. My kids participated in it. I might have participated in it, but I wasn't monetizing my lemonade. Um, what follows after the Saturday event is a little carnival on, on the following Tuesday. And I don't. I was just looking back to see when the last time it happened. I think it was 2019. I think it was suspended because of the pandemic. So this is sort of picking up again on something that's happened in the past. So it's just allowing them to use uh, land in the Trades District, uh, have right of entry to be able to do it for the carnival. Yeah, so they have a little carnival. I think they're going to have a pitch competition. Is that right? On Tuesday, just before this. So they're going to have Lemonade Day on Saturday. Then I think they do a pitch competition at the mill. And then right after that, there's a carnival. The carnival is going to include uh, maybe a bounce house, I believe. So that will be installed uh, on the lawn there. So this is a general, not only right of entry, but also release of liability for you're going to have people coming into that, that greenery and, and using it. But um, it should be a fun event. A wonderful opportunity for kids. Oh, Lemonade Day is one of those phenomenal things that happens that when you see the entrepreneurial spirit of the young people, it just makes you happy to be participatory. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. We should definitely support it in everything we do. So, all right. Well, with that, would uh, do you guys do the commissioners have any other questions? Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Randy Cassidy, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, Deb Hutton, second. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next item is resolution 22-41, right of entry for access to the North, for the 4th Street Garage for arch shows. Who would I, like to speak to this? I can take this one. Um, so as you know, there are uh, there's some retail spaces on the ground floor of the 4th Street Garage. They're pretty raw. Um, that we, we are getting interest in, in some of those spaces. In fact, I had a call about it last week. Uh, but in the meantime, because it's taking a while for, for us to attract uh, tenants in there, um, there is a request from our department to uh, use the spaces for two different art uh, uh, exhibitions. One is the Bloomington Photography Club. They have an annual exhibit um, that has uh, if you know the club, it's a you know it's about 100, 100 plus people, and they have a really good exhibit. And so we actually thought it would be a, a nice way to activate the space, and it doesn't really need to be fancy. 
um, but um, but because it would be in there, it, it you know it, it gets some attention, and I think that's also good for marketability of the space. So so that would be the first one, and that would be the exhibit would be July eighth through August nineteenth, um, and there would be seventy six framed photographs from the club, and um, we would like to have access to the space by July first to be able to set this set the the uh, exhibit probably throw up a little signage or something just to, to sh uh, show it off. And then the, um, the next thing would be probably overlapping uh, is a local quitter, quilter, I'm sorry, local quilter exhibition, uh, which we would also think could do well in there. So those are the two that are on the horizon. Generally speaking, you know, we do think that it might be a, an interesting use of some of the spaces as if they sit empty, if we can tactically get in and get out and not get in our own way to market it. But in both of these cases, we feel like that, you know, that will not impede the marketability. In fact, it would help. Do you see them using uh, a different space for each one or just the same space, first one, then the other? I think they probably will. Uh, my guess would be, uh, I think they're, if I'm not mistaken, three bays. Each of them is uh, 1,800 square feet. So it could be that maybe two would be used for one, and then the other one would be empty until the quilt mm -hmm. stuff came in. So they, they'll figure it out. They can, yeah. and we'll, will we be utilizing the space in any interactive aspect, or is it just an exhibition aspect? Because you know. Well, people would come in, yeah. right? Well, and, okay. and, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll post events okay. in there and things like That's that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Will we be participatory in helping to host these things or will we leave it to the Bloomington Quilters and to the Photography Club? You to mean the city or the city? The city. Excuse the city, the, so the Department of Economic and Sustainable yeah. Development will take the lead on helping to stand the exhibits up. Um, and um, so we'll have some role in it, for sure. Two excellent places. They're an excellent place to do it for two really quality artistic yeah, things. Yeah. Any other questions on resolution 22-41? If not, I'll uh, ask for a motion. Uh, Randy Cassidy, I'll make a motion to approve. Second to apply. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Resolution passes. Thank you. Next resolution is the one Larry alluded to earlier, resolution 22-42, approval of additional funds for neighborhood improvement grant distribution. Who would like to speak? this can do that um, so as the commissioners know the uh, there were three neighborhood improvement grants awarded uh, earlier this year that you uh, uh, voted to approve on April 18th uh, totaling um, twenty one thousand five hundred fifty one dollars and seventy four cents uh, we've since found out that at least one um, of those projects requires some ordering of supplies and materials, as you might suspect. But in doing that, um, one of the uh, charges is more than we thought it was going to be. And so we're mm -hmm. expecting some bit of overage there. Not a lot. So we think the $2,000 request is going to be more than enough. Um, but just to be safe with things going up, uh, we wanted to build in some cushion there. So we have plenty of, I uh, shouldn't say plenty of money. That makes us sound um, inappropriate. But we have the funds within the grant uh, account, if you will, to, to, to cover this. We're more than okay there, so um, as for your consideration of a $2,000 cushion for any other overages. We went ahead, I will tell you, there was a 30, the, the overage that we found out about was about $30. We went ahead and ordered that um, just to be safe so it didn't go up anymore and mm -hmm. thought you'd be okay with that, uh, if I may. So, um, <laughs> okay. so we're asking for this uh, resolution. So that, just to be clear, that's just you just need two thousand dollars for the all three together. That's yeah, that would be amount, not yeah, per. No, that would be just amount not to exceed number. for all the ordering and all the materials for all three projects. Mm -hmm. That would uh, that should cover any overages on any of the ordering. We think so. essentially it's a contingency fund for mm -hmm. any of the inflationary aspects that everybody's running. Into. Exactly. Okay, and any additional dollars that are left over will be put back in. Yeah, and um, it, because we're spending more than you approved originally, that's why we're coming back. So. Uh, you know, things could come, the projects could come in lower than, you know, mm -hmm. uh, than we anticipated at the end of the day, but because that amount, that ceiling was already approved, then we need to just bump it up. Okay. All right, any other questions from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Deb Hutton, I uh, move to make a motion to approve resolution 2241. No, 42. Randy Cassidy, second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion or resolution 22-42 passes. Next item of business is any uh, general discussion. All right, hearing none, I will ask for a motion that we adjourn. Randy Cassie, I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone.